So I just wanted to do a bit of a quick one before I put this amp away, because I've got to wait for some parts to arrive. This is kind of one of the prime examples as to why sometimes amps just aren't really repairable in an economic manner, right? This is an Ashton Viper 50. So it's a 50 watt tube head, two channel, I mean, pseudo four channel, um, designed in Australia, made in China. These things are actually really good, like way better than they have any right to be. They sold for next to nothing in sort of like the early, mid 2000s. The company was also doing like some really cool stuff at the time, including a 300 watt base head, like 300 watt tube base head, it was sick. This one came in several years ago. It was blowing fuses, wasn't working well. Um, at the time, secondhand, you could pick up a working one for 250 bucks. This was before tubes went absolutely insane price-wise. So, you know, customer brought it in, couldn't easily solve where the issues were, so they decided to just leave it with us, and off they went. So it sat in my sort of pile of projects for a long time now, and I started working on it to get it working. I figured, okay, I've got a bit of time up my sleeve, it's a bit quiet, I'll get to it. And so, for example, right, put in some tubes, got it operational, put in a new fuse, powered it up. It was operating, but one of the tubes was actually going way, way, way far, uh, like higher in terms of its um, idle current. So that indicates to me potentially something wrong with the tube, potentially something wrong with the bias, something along those lines. So shut it down, pulled it apart, started taking a bit of a closer look. The caps were in good condition, which was excellent, but when I took a bit of a look in the tray here, what I actually noticed was that there was, initially here, there was actually some like um, like scorch marks on the, P on the board. Pulled it out and the PCB noticed that the socket for one of the tubes was, you know, had like you know, charcoal in it. This is it after I've removed it. So if we take a look here, here we go can see that something's gotten in there and it's caused it to arc. Might have been a bug or something that's actually gone underneath there. Focus, come on, thank you. Obviously that's gonna cause some issues, especially because the PCB itself actually looked like this. Zoom in a little bit here. So we can see on the PCB there that we've actually got a burnt trace entirely. That arcing and that burning actually took all of that out and that's that's the signal to the grid. So it was losing its bias because whatever was there was holding on by just the flimsiest, flimsiest amount of copper that was still left. So now I've got to clear that out, run some jumpers and all the rest of that across that section, make sure it's good, put in a new socket as well, and that'll start giving us, you know, the next steps with which we can move on to. The rest of the board is in, you know, pretty good condition all in all. It's relatively well made. So it doesn't really look like beyond that there may be any other issues. However, it needed a new set of output tubes because one of them, you know, when that short had happened and it went into runaway, it killed the tube. So now I've got to put a new socket in there, jump at that section, make sure it's operational as well, and a new set of tubes. On a head like this, nowadays, they would this would sell secondhand for about 450 bucks. I've put thus far about an hour and a half into it. That's going to be about another hour's worth of labor there to get it operational, assuming nothing else goes wrong. So before I've even gotten this thing working, most likely exceeded the cost of a good secondhand one. That's why some of these units, while they're really good, repairing them is very, very hard in any kind of economic manner. So if you come down and you see us and you know a good tech will just be honest with you and just say, look, I don't think I can economically repair this for you. I'll give it a try. I'll charge you some of my labor time to at least take a closer look because you might be lucky, but you're more than likely going to end up with something that unfortunately is just going to end up, you know, as a parts donor or in the bin or something like this. This one, I'll probably end up giving it a bit of a recap. I might do some tweaks and mods to it and then sell it off to someone who wants a really, really rip roaring sounding you know, two channel head that'll do the rock, do the metal, do all that kind of jazz, be a little bit more reliable and you know, a couple of tonal tweaks. So that's it on this one here. As you can hear, my voice is already dying out because I'm getting over being sick. Um, 
yeah, so, you know, like, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. I'll be back with some more videos soon, and we'll have a bit of a chat on the next live stream. Until then, see ya.